Hey, creative weirdos. So we're going to dive right into another story structure breakdown of the film, Poor Things. But before we get into that, stay tuned to the end of the video to learn how to win this free ebook. So let's dive into the film, Poor Things, and break this down from act one to act three. And I always like to make sure to let people know about theme, which is very important before even writing your script or story or anything like that, because it, it governs a lot of things in your story. And in this case, for Poor Things, it was a book and it was adapted by Yoris Lanthimos. And so the themes are women's liberation, coming of age, self-actualization. We introduce the character in their everyday life. So in, in this case, we have Bella Baxter, who's brought back to life by Dr. Goodwin Baxter. If you haven't seen the film, honestly, go watch it. Stop right now if I'm ruining anything for you. So just a warning. It's going to be the whole film. Most of it, at least. So Dr. Gooden Baxter is this Frankenstein's monster looking character. You can see it in his face and everything like that, but it's a sad backstory of him. So he brings her back to life after she dies by committing suicide. So when she comes back, she has this childlike mindset and having been revived from death and her ordinary world is Bella lives under the protection of Dr. Baxter, who treats her with care and helps her adjust in her new life. She's isolated and curious about the world around her. And she's like, you can film. You can see that she's very childlike, even in her physical movements and everything. It's as if she's relearning everything. And there's a reason for that. There's a character in there that is, plays a big role. But obviously, since we're trying to focus on the main points, but I'll just mention him. So Max McCandles, which is played by um, Rami Youssef, a good actor. I like him. And he... He's there in the beginning, but he's kind of like upstaged. He's trying to treat her the best possible way compared to the next character who's in her inciting incident, which is Duncan Wedderburn, who is played by the Hulk, uh, Mark Ruffalo. So Bella encounters the charming lawyer, Duncan Wedderburn, who tempts her with the idea of escaping the confines of Dr. Baxter's home because she's kind of like this lab rat, but he also treats her like his daughter. But still, she feels confined because she's growing rapidly. She's trying to understand the world. And Hero enters a new situation, meeting new people or facing new challenges. Bella leaves and embarks on a journey with Duncan, this guy who just really wants to use her honesty. He sees that she's just open and susceptible to everything, and she's impressionable. She's exposed to the broader world, experiencing romance, sexuality, and society's expectations, though she remains somewhat naive and childlike through that whole experience. And it's very beautiful, very sad, and very questionable, honestly. But it is a journey that is very fulfilling. It's one of my new favorite films, honestly, much like other films by Euros Lanthimos. And like, on a side note, The Lobster. Go watch The Lobster. That's a whole other thing. So... The turning point, too, is when you make your goal. So the hero formulates a specific outward visible goal. And in this case, Bella gradually realizes that Duncan is not the man she thought he was. His self-serving nature and manipulation becomes clear, causing Bella to question her relationship with him and her own identity. Rightly so. And I'm, it's amazing to see this character grow through this whole film, honestly. It's like beautiful and fucked up. But very honest at visuals, storyline, everything's amazing. So once you make your goal, you dive into act two. And in this case, progress. With the new goal and plan, the protagonist struggles to let go of their old life and overcome mounting obstacles. In Bella's case, Bella continues to explore the world. She learns about societal inequalities, poverty, and her own desires, and becomes more aware of the world's complexities and her place in it. Her mindset begins to mature as she challenges societal norms. And she's doing this whole philosophical, you know, mental work in real time. You know, you can see it because she's exploring herself, exploring sexuality, exploring moral dilemmas and philosophical dilemmas of the world around her. So even through her sexual experiences, she's asking questions. She's also having empathy for people and trying to understand them. So after that, she goes to the point of no return, the midpoint of most films and everything. The protagonist makes a full commitment to their goal. In her case, Bella severs her ties with Duncan completely, deciding to fully embrace her independence. This decision 
marks a point where she cannot return to her previous naive self, her old self. And so she is so mature and so thoughtful and so calculating and she has empathy and, and openly says what she feels, which is very refreshing honesty for a character. But And it's not in this bad exposition way where it's on the nose, but it's, it's part of her character development. She says things that are truly in her mind and that is fucking up Duncan's plan because he just wanted to exploit her and use her. So moving from there, complications and higher stakes, as the characters pursue their new goal, returning home becomes impossible and stakes rise. Bella faces societal judgment as she starts becoming a sex worker and things like that and asserting her independence, figuring out her sexuality, figuring out her place in the world, questioning the world, and her freedom and decisions come at a higher cost. And she has to navigate the consequences of being true to herself in a repressive world. So she's she's free in the beginning like a child. And you can see this growth to an adult, but to this state of this very smart, smart questioning adult. So there's usually an all hope is lost. Bella faces a setback. And in this case, a devastating setback. Relationships become strained. Her independence leads to loneliness because she's overthinking. She's thinking about the world. She feels sad about certain aspects. And she realizes that true freedom comes with significant challenges. She goes into act three. The hero retreats to their old identity and gives up feeling unfulfilled and defeated, but they must make one last do or die for it. And in this case, she Bella returns home to see Dr. Baxter, who was dying and who was a father figure. She confronts the doctor and the conditions of her life, seeking closure and understanding. So she finds out that she is actually the child, the unborn child of herself, or at least the physical body. The physical body is her mother. And her mother had a child when she committed suicide. So Baxter, trying to save her, because he's a surgeon, one of the best, takes the baby's brain and puts it into the mother's brain. Hence the whole, you know, infant, like childlike aspects in the beginning of the film and this growth, this exponential growth. Obviously, it's a fictional, whimsical story, but it's still beautiful to see and fucked up at certain points. So in the climax, the hero embraces their true self, confronts their final challenges or villains, and resolves their central conflict. And in this case, she confronts Dr. Baxter about what he did, essentially. Even though there's sub-stories that I didn't get into, like Bella or the real Bella's husband, who's a piece of shit and all those other aspects, or McCandles, you know, them falling in love again like they did in the beginning, because she realized he was like really honest, even though he grew himself in the way he was viewing her as this test subject and everything like that. The climax revolves around Bella confronting Dr. Baxter about the truth of her rebirth and her newfound understanding of herself and the world. This moment solidifies her transformation and self-awareness as an individual. So it's coming back full circle of her origins. So once you, once you learn your origins, it's like, oh God, okay. What do I do now? Do I accept this? Do I move on? And in this case, she accepts it and she grows from that. And the resolution is the resolution obviously ties up blue sands and everything like that, showing the heroes full embrace of their new identity and achieving a sense of fulfillment and peace. So the film ends with Bella fully embracing her identity and freedom and having achieved autonomy of, over her own body, which is shown throughout the film because obviously. She's essentially her mother's child, but herself, it's this whole thing. You got to watch it. It's pretty amazing. And she no longer depends on others' validation or direction. And the, everybody sees that she's no longer naive. She's this fully realized being. And all the cast of characters, it's like this beautiful. So coming back full circle on how to win this beautiful, very, very useful tool, which always helps me honestly till this day i still use the structure i still use the guidance and everything like that because it makes it a lot easier and i'm not worried about certain aspects but the beautiful thing is once you know the rules you can break the rules and that's how i always view things so to win this week's free ebook in the comment section put the title poor things i'll pick one name and that person will win the free ebook for this week also, don't forget, we check out our website for any educational tools and help. And until next time, 
Peace out, weirdos.